Hi there. My name is Diana Famia. I'm the president of uh, Greater Washington, D.C. region, which includes uh, Virginia and Maryland. And I'm also the co-chair of the organization uh, of the National um, Organization of Italian American Women. Um, this evening, we have um, a very interesting guest speaker, and I think I think you'll really enjoy. However, uh, I just wanted to tell you, if you're not familiar with NOIA, uh, you are uh, with a group that's the actually the only Italian-American organization in the country for Italian-American women. Um, we have uh, four regions, Washington being one, uh, of course, New York, because New York is also our main office and uh, Connecticut, as well as uh, Rhode Island. Um, we also have members around the country and uh, some of these Zoom presentations are allowing them to get to know us a little better. Uh, we are uh, a group that uh, really promotes a lot of cultural and educational uh, information and stories and programs uh, of the Italian American experience. Um, <clears throat> we, um, we are always interested in people from around the country joining our, our group. Uh, this evening, our moderator is Sharon Leggio Falchek. And Sharon is going to be introducing this program. Our speaker is uh, Kathy McCabe. And Kathy has uh, prepared quite an interesting uh, program for us. And with, uh, with Sharon, when she's not into the, uh, her Italian heritage, uh, and she's a member of the uh, membership committee, she is a coach, a functional medicine certified health, health coach, which I have to ask her about. So, point. Mm -hmm. uh, so Sharon? Thank you so much, Diana. Um, welcome everybody. Thanks again for joining us this evening. Um, just a logistical thing at the beginning here. Um, as Charity said, this is being recorded. So if you have to pop off at some point, you will be able to revisit. Um, and as far as questions go, obviously we welcome questions um, and you can pop them in the, the chat. Uh, at the bottom of your screen there or off to the side, depending on where it shows up for you throughout the presentation, but we are not gonna be answering questions until the end. So if you wanna pop them in as we go along and at the end, I'll be kind of reading along and um, I will cue them up to Kathy. Or if you would like to take yourself off mute and ask her directly yourself, we also encourage that. So, um, you know, with that, get comfortable, settle in, and get ready to be transported um, by the magic of Italy. So I was so excited to put this presentation, bring this to you guys, um, and share our guest, Kathy McCabe, with you uh, in a fresh and fun way. You are probably familiar with her as the host of the hit PBS TV show um, and travel series, Dream of Italy, of which she also happens to be the executive producer. Um, however, some people aren't aware of the many hats that Kathy wears so masterfully. So she's the founder and creator of the award-winning Dream of Italy membership and uh, magazine. And there's a website for that, which we'll point you to at the end of this. Um, and it's turning 20 this year. She's been doing this for a long time, bringing Italy uh, to people. And what brings all of us here tonight is that more recently, Kathy created a beautiful new PB PBS series special called Dream of Italy, Travel, Transform, and Thrive, which I fell in love with because not only did it transport me to my favorite place during a time where we could only dream of traveling, um, but it also explored Italy and exactly what it is about the Italian way of life that makes people feel so good, mind, body, and soul. And now there's an amazing companion book to go along with it, which some of you may have, it's awesome, um, that takes a deeper dive into what that special kind of went through. Um, and Kathy pours her heart and soul into everything she does and her love for Italy really shines through, which we can all relate to as those in the Italian American community. 
But what I love about her too, is that she highlights Italy in such a way that it makes everyone fall in love with Italy, no matter what their heritage. So now I'm going to hand it over to Kathy um, to share her wisdom and wonder as she takes us along with her on this journey of transformation. Thank you so much, Kathy. That was very, very sweet. Thank you so much. So I prepared um, a presentation tonight that really highlights um, some of the things I've learned in these 20 years that I've been running Dream of Italy. And I could do this for hours. I could talk about this topic, but I thought I took a few of the ways that you could use Italy to transform your life. I'm sure that all of us, even if we're not at middle age like I am, with COVID, we're like, what do we do next? What's important? What should we do with our lives? So maybe this will give you some inspiration, big and small. So let's get started. Um, I love the name, which I came up with, and it really is using Italy to transform your life. It doesn't mean you have to do something, you'll go to Italy, move to Italy, retire in Italy. I think Italy can um, inspire you. Um, I have a funny story, this fr these friends of mine who are American, um, and they run an agriturismo, a farm, like a farm B&B &B in La Marque. They had guests that came over and they're actually in the book. And they said, after we stayed with you, we decided to open a hat shop because like that was our dream. So we saw you doing your dream. So it doesn't have to be Italy. It doesn't have to be my dream. It can just be your own dream. So I just a little bit about me because Italy changed my life. This is Dream of Italy. You've probably seen it. Or if you haven't, you've got a link to the most recent special on PBS, but it's also on Amazon and a bunch of other streaming services. Um, this is me in Venice. We've had two seasons and two specials. And a lot of it is the authentic. So it's not Rick Steves. We're not telling you everything you need to do in Venice. We're highlighting some of the things that you might not know about or learning and, and hands-on. And we'll get, get to some hands-on experiences in this presentation. So 20 years ago, I started this. I was just a child. <laughs> um, and and it was... The what? I'm not, I'm not seeing the slides. I don't know if any, are you showing slides? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Assuming you, uh, assuming you're referencing. Let me go back. Okay. Okay, hold on. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Sorry, I might not have hit share. That's okay. Okay. There we go. Now you see it. Okay, sorry. Yes. No, that that's okay. Like, okay, so we started with the name and um, how to change your life using Italy. Dream of Italy. This is the logo that you've maybe seen. And I love the cypress trees in the back. Um, this is just uh, just to tell you what Dream of Italy is about, although Sharon did share. Uh, we have two seasons, which are six episodes each and two specials. And the premise is a lot of the authenticity of Italy. It's not you need to do these 10 things when you go to Venice because, and I feel really sorry for Stanley Tucci and his show because I watch it and then I'm reading Twitter and people are like, well, why didn't you go here and here? Or what about this? It is impossible. You could do 20,000 hours on Italy and not cover all of it. So all of this started 20 years ago. We actually have 187 back issues since I made this graphic. Um, it started as a newsletter and it's now a magazine and um, it's just all the members get access to all of the back issues and it's uh, all kinds of ideas for your trip to Italy and also I'll explain how we've been moving in a new direction which is sort of the direction of this presentation tonight. We also have a travel service if you're interested in traveling I can ref I just refer you to people that I really really trust with my life. So um, as Sharon referenced last, well, I filmed it, we filmed it in 2019, thank God. Um, and the, it started with this invitation to film it at Sting and Trudy Styler's um, uh, estate in Tuscany. But I had been thinking about this idea because every season, well, not the first season, but the second season, and we did a special with Francis Mays, of Under the Tuscan Sun, we filmed with Francis Ford Coppola in Basilicata. So every season had a star. But the thing that I noticed is they really, 
when I met them, it, you know, all Italy was our common ground. And yes, they're famous. They've done these huge things, but they're just like us. Because I said to Sting, why? why anywhere in the world you could live and they really really love it so what we did in the special is we interviewed um a couple we put our stars in there but then we also interviewed regular people who moved to Italy and which I'll tell you a little bit more about so what I learned in these 20 years is Italy is not about just about travel it might not even really be about travel it it's about finding ourselves, um, finding transformation, feeling alive and doing some new things. So that was, that's what's in the special, which you get a link, you have a link to. And then there's a companion book, which is 276 pages because I was going to make it 150, but had a lot to say. And it includes profiles, like 15 profiles of people who used Italy to change their lives. And only like half of them moved to Italy. Some of them started businesses, travel related or others. Some of them, um, one of the coaches that I interviewed, you know, her, she was a single mom and her whole dream was to bring her kids to Italy. Now she's doing a retreat this summer in Italy. So it's a great, if you enjoy tonight's presentation, you will enjoy the book, I promise. Okay, so how did all of this start? So I have a very Irish name. And I might even look like I'm very Irish, but I'm half Irish. And my mother's family is from this town, Casovetere Solcolore, which is, it's beautiful, isn't it? It's just so beautiful. It's in Irpina in the province of Avellino, which a ton of Italian Americans are from, including Tony Soprano. And it's right here. And my entire life changed the day my mother and I showed up in this town. I cannot believe we were wearing sneakers and shorts. And this was 1995. And the night before we stayed in Avellino, we were the only women. We were the only Americans. We were having dinner. It was all businessmen. And my grandfather had tried to find this town in the 1960s. He was on a cruise. He said to the cab driver, take me to Castelvetre because his dream was to see this town. And he was taken to the wrong town and he couldn't get back on the ship if he'd gone to the other town because the roads weren't good after World War II. So my grandfather was 93 and my mother, and back in the US and my mother and I took this trip to Italy and we were like, well, we have to go. So we found the town and my grandfather died 36 hours later and I, not knowing or knowing that we found the town. So it was very pivotal and I fell in love and that's what started Dream of Italy for me. And then in 20, um, so that is Generoso, the guy with the mustache is my great grandfather. And then the little boy on the left who's trouble is my grandfather. So they were, um, Generoso was born in this town of Castelvetre and he was unusual. And one of the things I recommend and why I'm sharing my roots, my story of my roots is I really recommend looking into your family story and doing it before like my mom and dad have now passed away and nobody wrote and like half the photos nobody wrote the names on the back so if that's the only thing you do go through your family photos write the names write the years um but my whole dream of italy came to be because i was researching my family roots many many years ago so generoso was unusual in that he came pretty early like late like 18 86. He worked on the railroad in New York. He hurt his arm and they wanted to amputate it. And he said, no way. I'm going home to Italy. And there's this Madonna that's going to heal me. And he was healed. And he, he returned to America in 1890. So everything came full circle because in 2017, uh, I brought my parents. My mother had stage four cancer. Uh, and we filmed with the Madonna. This is the Madonna delle Grazie. And it was incredible. And we uh, researched our family history. I was made an honorary citizen. Um, and so this is how my dream started and how I fell in love with Italy. Now, when we filmed this episode, we, I was also researching whether I could get citizenship. Um, and the honorary citizenship doesn't count to get a passport. So 
I could not because even though my, you know, when you're born anywhere in the world to an Italian citizen, you're considered Italian. It's not like the U.S. where like if a baby is born in the U.S. and they're an American citizen because of where they're born. Um, and so my grandfather was born in 1902. His father did not naturalize until 1905. So technically he was Italian, but there was a law in 1912 that uh Anyone who naturalized before 1912 gave up their citizenship, their Italian citizenship, and an Italian law, and that of their minor children and spouses. So in the show, I say I can't become a citizen, but I didn't give up. And my grandmother's side is from Ariano Irpino, which I've been to, and I am now pursuing my citizenship. And this is really like, we'll give you chills through the women in my family. And so that's my grandmother and my great grandmother. Um, Marie Cazone and Caterina Screma. And I'm actually going to court in Rome because there's a law that in 19, uh, 19, not until 1948 could women pass down their citizenship. So most cases, when you bring it to court, they agree that it's discriminatory. There was a Supreme Court ruling. And so I should be getting my citizenship that way, going through my mother, and then my grand, my grandmother and her parents, which I think is really, really beautiful. So one way to transform your life is to really look into your genealogy, um, go and visit the town that you're from. Now, and if you need any help, I'm Kathy at dreamofitaly.com. I know people all over the country, especially in the South, who will help arrange a visit to your relatives, like find your relatives, call them, go with you. Our driver for the filming the TV show, someone needed help in Tuscany and I, they hired my driver um, who usually drives my crew and um, he took them to meet their family. So this is, um, and if you get an Italian, Italian citizenship, and a European Union passport, you have so many options in life. You can live in Italy, um, you can get healthcare in Italy, you can retire in Italy, you can get very low cost education, uh, undergraduate, graduate for your kids, your grandkids, you can vote in Italy, um, and you can live anywhere in the European Union. So this is a big trend right now. I'm happy to help or, or send you to the right people to help you do this. So my story started with my roots and finding my roots and visiting and then all this happened. So this is my friend Frances Mays. I guess it's sort of a side shot of her in front of her really famous Villa Brahma Sole in Cortona, which is the uh, main character of Under the Tuscan Sun. And I interviewed Francis in 2018. And we had such a wonderful conversation. But one of the things that she told me that really st stuck with me is that women go to Italy on a quest. I guess I went on a quest to find my um, ancestral hometown. And I always think about what she said, that women are usually, it's a great place to go and find yourself. So I really encourage women, especially when you're sort of lost or not sure what's next to go to Italy. And I, I have no, I'm pretty adventurous, but I'm, um, I have very high comfort with traveling alone, but there's many great groups that you can travel with. I just think it gives you a new perspective on things. And it seems like even if you don't know you're looking for something, you're looking for something in, in Italy. And so one thing that I recommend in Italy, but then you can also do this at home is to really get hands on. Now, when I started this 20 years ago, like cooking classes were just becoming big. And I love the dough. I love any kind of pasta or pastry because my grandmother and I have her rolling pins and all of her things. Um, my grandmother used to make all of these things. So um, one way to really kind of get out of your head and away from the computer, whether you're in Italy or here is to get hands-on and try a cooking class. Obviously there's virtual cooking classes now. If you can't 
go somewhere. Um, but it's a great way to reconnect, to nourish your soul as well as your body. This is um, when we filmed in Basilicata. This was one of the hottest days of my entire life. And maybe you could tell I'm like totally red, but we did this fantastic cooking class outside on the beach. And any of these classes and hands-on activities are a great way to connect with the locals. And that can be life-changing. I mean, just, you'll have friends forever. Um, this guy, I should just go, I could go find him on the beach. <laughs> he actually, we, we, um, we got these little clams called Tallene. He was teaching me how to clam. And then we made the spaghetti and seafood. So um, people think it's just food, but it's not. Uh, in the show, this is like my favorite thing to do is to get hands on and learn how to do something. And a lot of these things are things that women did throughout history in Italy. So this is Marissa Convento. You can go just like me. The thing about the show is probably 90, 95% of the things I do in the show, you, you can't go to Sting's house, sorry, but you can do almost everything else. Um, and Marissa is an impiedadessa. So she was, uh, it's an old art of bead stringing in Venice. And so, oh gosh, I should have found, that's the necklace I should have worn. I have a beautiful necklace that she put in my purse and I didn't realize I had it till I was like back at the hotel. Like Italians are so generous, but she didn't want me to be embarrassed or say no, you know, and it was very expensive, and very beautiful um, uh, necklace, but you can actually go in Venice and learn bead stringing with Marissa, but you'll also learn this history of how important women were and beads were used as currency. Um, and this, this is one of those, those things I recommend. Also in Venice, and the reason I chose this was because it's another woman owned business, woman owned activity. This is Nan, she's from Atlanta. She lives in Venice. She learned how to row um, Vola alla Veneto, Ven Veneto, I think, Veneto. Um, I'm trying to think of the name of the, the art of the rowing. And she started a business called Row Venice. It's all women and they will teach you, and it's great for kids, I think too, how to do this traditional Venetian style rowing. The other thing I love about it, and one of the things that's in the book is Italy, People move more in Italy, like movement. You know, you walk, you see everybody. Bicycling, uh, cycling is really big. And of course, if you leave, live in Venice and you're rowing, um, even if it's for fun, it's a great way to stay in shape and to stay spry. So this is something that I recommend in Venice. But again, like when I lived in DC, I live in Denver now. I did, there's a like rowing classes on the Potomac in Alexandria. So you don't have to go to Italy to find these things. It's a little different. It's like crew. Um, but these are just some ideas to start to do something new. So I can't talk about Italy without talking about art and beauty. And we could do an hour on this, but I thought it was well worth bringing up. Of course, Italy has like 60% of the world's art. This is the Sistine Chapel in the Vatican, um, you know, there's a travel tip. If you do go, there are some tours you can take that are either early morning or late at night where you can have it mostly to yourself. And I would really recommend one of those because boy, is it crowded and I don't know who's going this summer. It's packed. I think I got like the last rental card. I'm not kidding, actually. <laughs> I'm actually not kidding. Um, so it's really packed, but uh, you know, we go to Italy, we take in the art. There's that thing called Stendhal syndrome, where when you see too much art, you get sick. But I have a new suggestion. This is in Florence. It's the Palazzo Medici Riccardi, and it's really famous. It's in the Medici family had Godoli. I think it's Benezzo Godoli. Uh, paint these fresh, oops, nope. How do I go back? Okay, paint these beautiful frescoes in 1459. And so in our Florence episode, we go, of course, that's the dog. We go to look at these frescoes, but you know, you can look at all the art you want. This time I learned how to make a fresco. 
And you have no idea how hard it is, how fast you have to be, how fast it dries. And that gave me a whole new appreciation for art in Italy. So I highly recommend that you, hold on one sec, I will. <laughs> Sorry. So sorry. <laughs> Honestly, he sleeps all day. And then I do the I did something last night and he also barked once. Hopefully it's just once. This you is get excited about Italy too, Kathy. Oh, I told the ladies <laughs> I'm bringing him to Italy. That's like a whole other story. But he's a miracle. There's actually a crazy story related related to the Madonna and my dog. If you believe, you believe. And he has had miracle after miracle. And uh, I didn't think he'd make it this long. And I'm like, well, I got to go back to Italy. And we're kind of inseparable. So I think he's coming. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> um, but I wanted to share that art and getting your hands on art and doing the art is a great way to kind of to do something new. My mom, um, I'm not wearing one of her necklaces. She's going <laughs> to... She's not about, my mom was a teacher, but she started going to Italy with me and she started making uh, necklaces out of Venetian glass beads, but really unusual ones. So she had a whole new chapter in life because of these trips and she just sort of fell into that. And she didn't realize how artistic, I should have put some, some uh, I should have actually told her story a little bit more, but uh, she was quite successful and sold at shows and, um, displayed at museums. And um, so that's an example. She just sort of fell into it by going to Italy. So I recommend, now you can learn anything <laughs> in Italy. And I recommend trying one of these art classes. This was, there's a woman that was painting this. We just ran into her, she's American. I think her name is Anne Marie. And she was painting on the Ponte Vecchio. And you know, there's just so much beauty and so much inspiration in Italy. I don't think you have to go and do anything. You can kind of take it in. And that's sort of what Frances was saying. She would say she sees all these women who come to Cortona because of her, which must be so strange. I mean, beautiful and strange. And, um, and they're sitting there having coffee and they're just, they're, they're on a quest. They're taking it all in. So, um, this is, uh, these are the door, some doors in Venice. And the reason I put this in is we interviewed uh, the author, his name is David Bach. He wrote like 10, he'll, there'll be a picture of him later in my presentation. He was on Oprah. And I remember seeing him on Oprah years ago about personal finance. And I ended up interviewing him in 2019 because he moved his entire young family to, Italy, to Florence for a radical sabbatical supposed to be a year the kids were going to international school they're still there it's like three years later I don't think they're ever leaving but their son he would say I go all around Florence and I look at the doorknobs because they're so beautiful and different so in Italy it's just everything it's every little detail um and also in the clothing and in the things that people wear. This is one of my favorite people. She's an amazing woman. Her name is Nora Kravis. She's a veterinarian. She moved to Chianti 20, maybe 30 years ago. And along the way, she started a goat farm. It's called Chianti Cashmere. And I have a number of her scarves and you can go and bring your kids or you don't have to be a kid, but it's great for kids and visit her goats. But the reason I put her up here is her story is inspiring, but also, you know, Italians will spend money like these scarves are several hundred dollars, but they'll have fewer things. You know, they will accessorize. They won't wear their yoga pants everywhere like I do. Um, and I dress way better in Italy. And I have to tell you, people recognize, who recognize me from the show recognize me in Italy, partially, mostly because because I'm into context but usually because I have makeup on and I'm dressed really nicely. And um, I'm sort of fascinated by Italians and their habits. And, you know, they have armoires. They do not have built-in closets. So they change over. Like they have like official days and Italians, like while they 
don't love rules. They do love rules. And it'll be like September 1st, they're wearing their scarves and their puffy coats and they change over their wardrobe. So Italians have, you know, a real sense of beauty, even in um, what they wear and how they wear it. This is my friends, Becky and, and Vittorio. Becky is profiled in here. She's an American who started these trips to Italy called L Live Tuscan. I took my dad on, before he passed away on one of these trips. Every night, the table has different, they're like the Martha Stewart of Italy. They have different place settings and tableware and accessories. This I just pulled off of Facebook from like the other night's dinner. And I think it's something we can learn. Like, even if you're home, you can make your, set your table and make it pretty and enjoy beauty in the everyday and the beautiful china um, or ceramics. So if you ever visit Cortona, I'm happy to share how to, to go to his agriturismo. It's beautiful. So going from the table to the table, um, something that can transform your life is of course the Mediterranean diet. And we do a bit, I do a bit in the book about the diet, which is why Italians, I'm really sorry about this dog. He probably, he doesn't really eat the Mediterranean diet. <laughs> he eats a lot of chicken. Um, you can have a little bit of meat, not a lot. Um, so Italy is frequently the number one healthiest country in the world. There's a Bloomberg Global Health Index. And when I was doing this special a couple years ago, Italy was number one. And that was part of why I did the special because how do we teach other people to be healthy like the Italians? And it starts with this Mediterranean diet, lots of vegetables, organic. And one of the reasons that he, sorry. All right, I'm very sorry. <laughs> Here he is. This is Finney. He's going to Italy. He's going to get his little medical records ready to go. Um, so tomatoes, organic foods. Italy is different than the U.S. in that fresh organic food is much cheaper and much more readily available. And that's one of the reasons why they're so healthy. Seafood's important. Olive oil. Now, olive oil, and if you go to get olive oil in Tuscany, it's really spicy. A lot of the uh, olives are spicier, and I love, uh, I love the olive oil in Tuscany. <clears throat> and now you can do tastings. Like, remember, it was just wine tasting. Now it's olive oil tasting. So two tablespoons a day maximum is what the FDA says that you should have. And, of course, red wine. I mean, our grandparents... <laughs> That's what they were drinking. It has resveratrol. It's very good for you. You should, of course, ask your doctor, but it's another reason. And Italians, you know, you don't see a lot of drunk Italians. They don't over drink and they only drink when they're eating food, when they have food. So, and then I think, you know, here's some Parmigiano Reggiano. Every region you go to has its own fresh, you know, ancestral, ancestral made for centuries foods. And I think that's a fun thing to explore. We explore that um, on the show, but there's so many books about history of food and how it also reflects. Um, there's this wonderful, there's this new book out that this professor wrote about women in fascism and food. And I'm really eager to read about it, just how it reflects so many things in history in many parts of Italy, it's cucina povera, where you use every part of the pig, you use every part of the cow, you know, nothing goes to waste. You use the five day old bread. Um, and uh, it, it can inform you uh, really on the history of the place. Food is also really social in Italy. So this is a market in Palermo. I mean, you don't, in Colorado, we talk about the weather. Like I just told you it's gonna snow, it's 90 and it's gonna snow tomorrow. In Italy, you talk about the last meal you had, the next meal you're going to have, where you're going to have it, how you prepared it. You talk to the people who are providing the food. Um, where does it come from? How do you make it? So food is also really, really social. Um, and I love that. And the markets. So you don't, 
they don't have big refrigerators in Italy. They don't really have, although they kind of more and more, they don't have like a Costco. You don't have like huge, you buy food fresh, right? And you make it fresh and it really leads to their health. So I think Sharon um, uh, referred to community and this is just a typical town, the piazza and the old guys sitting there in the afternoon. And the thing I love the most about Italy and noticed it, especially when my parents aged, is that you know everyone in the community is included. And there's a real sense of community. And especially when you're older, you still have sort of a place to go and people to talk to. And a lot of that takes place in the piazza. And so you go to any town and go to the piazza and you don't need, you know, the internet to know what's going on. You sort of get the gossip. And that's the thing I think is so different about um, Italy versus the U.S., but something we can also cultivate here at home is community. And that is one reason. This is my friend Sally Carasino. She is American, even though she has an Italian last name, she married an Italian, uh, like an Italian American. She's not Italian. And her husband passed away and she lived in California. And she's like, what am I going to do with my life? And she retired to Florence at 70. And she's in the show and there's a huge interview with her in the book. She's one of my heroes. She has a little dog. So you can understand why I liked her. Um, and she has the most vibrant life of anyone I know. And um, she is part of this trend of people retiring in Italy. And I think it's because there is this sense of community. Um, life is, is meant to be lived. And I really, uh, I think it's something that people can consider. And one thing is, so I was showing this idea of transforming your life. You might want to go to Italy for an extended amount of time or retire there. Um, or you don't have to retire there. You can just travel there. So you can go 90 out of every 180 days to the Schengen area of, of Europe. And so it means you can go for three months. Then you have to leave um, and fulfill that 180 days. And you can go back for three months. So Francis Mays, my friend Francis Mays, She's in Italy usually like 182 days or less than a year. And you don't need a visa. That's just as a tourist. So you could go rent a place for a couple months. Sally recommends if you're thinking of moving. I mean, all these people buying places. And if you have more power to you, people are buying places sight unseen during COVID in Italy. And I, I, I couldn't do it. But, you know, you can go and stay and see if you like it. And then there's ways to get, Sally is on a um, elective residency visa where you show you have passive income like social security or pension. You're not taking a job away and you can live there. So that's something we're also writing a lot more about in Dream of Italy and covering for people. And then, you know, there's a huge, people are buying places. Um, so this is just like a sample. This is in Piemonte. There's those one euro houses. We write about that in the book. You really have to know what you're doing um, because it can cost you a lot more to fix up the house. And I think you have to be really fluent in Italian and a really good negotiator to do, to do something like that. And you have to be okay living in a little town that might be kind of boring sometimes. So it's a wonderful dream to have, but you can really, we have like 80 pages in the book about how to move to Italy and all those nuts and bolts and the things you don't think about. Then the Italian language, obviously it's wonderful to go and be able to speak, but there've been studies that even learning <coughs> another language later <coughs> in life helps with dementia or staving it off, <coughs> staving off memory loss. <coughs> there are so many <coughs> ways, I'm so <coughs> sorry. There are so many ways to learn Italian. Um, we're doing an article in the next magazine about there's YouTube videos. There's this fairy tale YouTube um, channel that you watch it and you can have either Italian subtitles or English subtitles. And it's a great way to learn. You can do Skype lessons with a native Italian, even from home. 
So even if you're not ready to travel or move, learning Italian is a great idea. So how do you actually make these dreams come true? Because it's one thing to like be like, oh, I want to move to Italy. But then who really does it? And how do they really do it? Well, it's about defining your dream and taking action. So one thing that's really interesting when I was researching transformation and dreams is what did you love to do as a child? And did you get far away from that? And do you want to go back and try that? So think about what some of your dreams, what things you like to do. And you can start with a smaller dream or a bigger dream. Talk to people. So there's never been more information, though I have to warn you, some of the Facebook groups like on citizenship and visas, you know, not everyone's information is correct. But there's never been a better time where you could talk to people who've done it. You can be connected right away. And everyone knows somebody who's moved to Italy or started a business or done something like that. Here's David Bach and his family, including his dog, Rocky, who probably doesn't bark during webinars um, or presentations. <laughs> um, but and that's his little son who he looks kind of sad there, but he's the one who liked the doorknobs. And David, you know, his whole thing was about his whole career is about financing your dreams. And he actually made quite a mark in helping women with their pers with personal finance like 20, 30 years ago. And he shared a couple of tips with me that are somewhat, they're really simple, but really helpful. Put a date on the calendar that you're going to accomplish this goal by. Like they decided maybe two years before they moved, we're moving, you know, we're going to school September, 2019. Uh, we're going to move to Italy so the kids can go to school. So put the date, like I'm gonna be fluent in Italian or I'm gonna start learning Italian or I'm gonna take this trip, put it on the calendar and then work your way back. But I know even for myself, if I don't have a deadline, it doesn't really get done. The other thing he shared, which Sally shared, is to have a dream account. And they actually called it, or he called it a dream account. I'm like, that's a good name. But Sally and her husband, when they were working and married, uh, he was alive, they would each put $500 in uh, an account for travel. So each month they would take it out and then they knew that they had, sorry. I don't know, he might get kicked out of Italy and there'll be an international incident. And then this was just a fun picture that I was finishing up the slide presentation and I'm like, oh, this kind of encapsulates what Italy means. So I always say to see Italy with new eyes and new perspectives. So I've been to Rome so many times, but um, October 2019, I did one of these sidecar trips uh, around Rome, and it was incredible. And even if you can't walk very well, I mean, there's so many options. So that was just me really enjoying Rome. So I will wrap it up, and I found a dreamy question <laughs> picture, and I can take some questions if you have some. Thank you so much, Kathy. I'm um, so sorry about the dog. No, don't be sorry. <laughs> this is real life, right? I, you know. I mean, I, I. So sometimes I give him a trazodone. I'm like, oh, I'm not going to drug my dog tonight. So next time yeah. I will. <laughs> no, no, it's totally fine. I think everyone here understands. Probably has either, their own. It's either kids or dogs or yes. instruction or something going on. So don't worry about that. Um, honestly, you've inspired me so much. Um, this was so just really transported me for the last, you know, almost hour. It was really amazing. And um, some of the things that stood out to me, there were a couple of questions, but I just wanted to point out um, this, the place settings, you know, using nice things now, if we have, you know, not saving them for, if anything, we've learned during this pandemic. Oh, my mom had so much stuff I've inherited. It's in a storage space. I'm not even doing what I said I should say I should yeah. do. Well, I mean, little by little, like a lot of times we teach what we need to, to hear. Right. So maybe this will remind you to get right. some stuff out. Um, also, putting the date on the calendar is uh, huge because not only does it, you know, give you a deadline, but it also just puts that energy out there, sets that intention. And I don't know if people have heard the story of Jim Carrey when he was poor, he wrote himself a check for like a million dollars in the future. And at that point, the date he put on it, he had gotten his first, I think it was Dumb and Dumber or some film, 
So you never know when you set that intention out there, what, what can come to be. So um, thank you for all of these things. So, so much. And you should tell other people too, if you tell them that you, um, like I'm working on this book proposal for a new book and mm -hmm. I've told all these people and I'm mm -hmm. running really behind. But if you tell other people, yeah. you have accountability too. Exactly. Like, yeah. They're like, so when are you, when are you going to Italy? Right. Yeah. And sometimes if you can get a group to, you know, like you have friends, you want to go together and yeah, that makes it more likely to happen too, if you all plan together. So, so some questions we have here, Marianne asks, what do you think about buying a vacation or retirement home in Italy? You already touched on that. I don't know if you want to. Well, I don't know. Them. You know, you can't resell necessarily as fast as you do here, mm. so it should be it. You shouldn't be buying it thinking, oh, I'll just sell it if I need to, because it's not that kind of culture, yeah. you know, where people move a lot. They don't move a lot. Yeah. And um you know, prices have definitely gone up. I regret, I went to Puglia for the first time in 2004 yeah. and I should have bought I, uh, something then. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think if it's, it's a financial decision and I would really, I can actually, in the book, there's um, uh, an American, he's American born, but he's a licensed real estate agent in Italy and they're very rare. Mm. And so you have to use the real, the right people yeah. too. Yeah people you trust. That's why it's yeah. good to, to touch base with people like you and use your resources because you've vetted. Yes. For that. So yes. he also asked Marianne, do you think it's safe for a single retired woman to retire to Italy? Well, that person that you have in the- Oh, I know many book, people. Yeah. Yeah. Even in small towns. I do. I do think, you know, it is a, but you know what I interviewed, we didn't touch on, um, um, my other friend who's in the, the special, mm -hmm. um, and she's a single woman and she lives in Rome mm -hmm. and she works, she changed careers to be an interior designer, but she's another single woman who lives in Italy. So mm -hmm. I, I think it's doable. I, I, yeah. I wouldn't, I would do it. Yeah. And then Denise asks, uh, where did you rent the red car in Rome? Oh, it's called live. Italy tours, L-I-V, it, this, the sidecar tours. Okay. They're so great because you can have kids, you could have older people. I have never, you know, the pine trees as you're going towards the Coliseum, I'm like, oh my God, I've never <laughs> just tilted my head back and seen them like this. Yeah, that's um, so it's really fun. I really recommend it. And if, you know, if anyone needs the details, I can send them to you too. Great. Um, Grace asked, do you feel Puglia Basilicata will become major tourist arena in the coming years? It already is, isn't it? Puglia is already. Yeah, There's a lot of Ryanair, um, flights. Mm -hmm. I like Basilicata. Um, there's a place called, of course we did, uh, Bernalda and Matera in the show, but there's a place if you've never been called Maratea, which is about two and a half hours South of the Amalfi coast, just as beautiful, more beautiful. Um, and a lot of Americans don't know about it. So you can still get really good deals though to buy. Okay. That's in Basilicata. Yeah. Um, another question. Um, do you have any ideas about teaching English in Italy and living with a family there? Yeah, there's a real need for people. That's what people mostly do when they move. Um, you could also get a student visa. Usually say you're going to learn Italian you're allowed to work for 20 hours a week. So oh. yeah, and I have gotten different advice. One lawyer tells me anyone, any age can get it. The other one tells me it's harder hmm. uh, if you're older. It depends on the consulate you go to in the US and what they decide. Okay. Um, someone asks, um, are there timeshares in Italy like they have in the United States? There are. I'm really fascinated by them. They're called like, they're not called timeshares. There's one Casole. I don't know if they still do it. C-A-S-O-L-E. Casa, Casa di Casole. It was a pretty famous one in Tuscany. Pretty high end, but you get like three or four weeks a year. Um, there's a woman and Karen, who's a member of Dream of Italy, she and like seven friends got together and bought a house in Cortona and did their own share. Oh, cool. And they have a system where they pick weeks. You know, everyone like rotates yeah. and gets for that. You really got to like these people and know these people well. Yeah. But that's a really good idea too. And I'm trying to do a follow-up article on these shares, these 
there's one, there's one in Lamarca I know of, um, but they're not, they're, I think they're doable. They're not as like, you know, everyone like timeshares you can't get out of. I mean, um, I think they're pretty reputable, the ones I know about. Okay, that's good. Someone asks, is it safe to rent Vespas? I've never done it. I mean, I'm- <laughs> It takes some bravery, right? Yeah, lots of people do do it. Definitely wear a helmet. I don't know if they have to. In Denver, they don't have to, which really bothers me. Yeah. But um, uh, you definitely just be safe. I mean, Rome, I've driven in Rome. Oof, not for the faint of heart. I would just be careful. Yeah. I don't know if I would rent one in, in, in Rome. Yeah. In Naples. Yeah. And I, like, I drove, I drove in Ireland. I've driven, I don't care. I drive in New York City. It doesn't bother me. Rome is crazy. Yeah. All right. We have a couple minutes here. So let me just make sure. Um, someone asked, what's the town you just mentioned that's not touristy? Maratea, M-A-R-A-T-E-A. -A -A. Okay. Um, Trieste, I'm yeah. seeing her. Yeah. Look at, this is our new issue. It is, it's up um, in the um, Northeast. It's uh, a really fascinating place. That's not always been part of Italy. Hmm. And it's little known. And we have a huge article on Trieste. And I knew some people that are members of Dream of Italy that were going to learn Italian for a few months there. Hmm. Yeah. Great. Uh, someone's asking about working on a farm, agiturismo. There's something called Work Away. There's some volunteer, like you can, there's some clearinghouse type websites. I think I put them in the book mm -hmm. that, um, yeah, you can go volunteer and work on a farm and they let you live there. There's this place, there's this great publication. I know a lot of subscription publications because that's my field. And I feel like it's called Caretaker Gazette and it's caretaker um, jobs all over the world. And like, it may be someone who's leaving their dogs for a month. Like I'm going to leave my dog in Italy, kidding. <laughs> um, you know, leave, they need someone to come and stay with their dogs or something. So you can look into that. Great. Um, since you have honorary citizenship, do you own a home Italy I do not and the honorary citizenship is not does not give me a passport or anything like that I'm working on my citizenship I've been like uh that means I haven't done the paperwork I I so it should take me like two years um the court the way of going through courts actually faster than through a consulate uh you don't get a choice it's however your case works but there is an option and we're doing this workshop. You, if you qualify for citizenship via consulate, you can actually go and live in Italy on a special visa and claim your citizenship there in three to six months. Oh, wow. That's yeah. good to know. Yeah. And as we wrap up, I did want to point people to you and someone did ask how you get the magazine. So I want you to give us all your, your social handles and also your website is Dream it's of Italy. All Dream of Italy. And for the magazine, it's dreamofitaly.com slash join. And we always have a bonus gift and they're in the other room. There are these really beautiful greeting cards that have Italian phrases on them. Um, but you get access to a almost 190 back issues. So chances are I've written about it or somebody's written about it in the magazine if you're interested in a place and um you can look them all up by places and topics yeah and, that's the great part is they're all electronic too I mean you can choose to get the physical copies too but right. um yeah yes so thank you so much I'm so sorry about my dog no, <laughs> it worked out fine and I just want to thank you so much for this it was so magical and uh inspirational so you're very welcome he is a miracle so I won't get too mad at him he no. uh, that, that Madonna does some things for members of my family <laughs> yeah it sounds like you've got quite a connection there yes yes everyone so anyway I hope you enjoyed it yeah, Everyone and my it. email is Kathy, K-T-H-Y at dreamofitaly.com. If you have any questions that I went over some things, I'm happy to help. Awesome. Thank you, Kathy, and thank you everyone for joining. This was such a fun evening, and I hope that you can all get maybe a little bit of inspiration to start working on your dreams. Um, yes, yes. We can all share them at some point, what, how, what this kicked off for everybody. Yes, let me know. Yeah. Oh, the email is Kathy, K-A-T-H-Y, at dreamofitaly.com. Thank you so much, Kathy. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Have a good night.